So the next presentation that we've got is from Xavier Lekambidi from Marine Instruments and the Basque Research Institute, AZTI. Hello, my name is Xavier Lecumberri and I'm a computer scientist currently doing my PhD on ASTI. I specialize in computer vision and in this presentation I'm going to tell you how we apply it to the identification and measurement of tropical tuna. To do this, we use cameras already installed on the boats that take images of the fish area. Our work begins by making a selection of the available images. Then, based on these images and annotations made by expert observers, we train and validate our prediction models. Finally, we compare our estimates with official data collected in ports. The two main workflows share two of their tasks, image preprocessing and segment preprocessing. The image preprocessing is divided into three parts. First, perspective correction and contrast enhancement. By following these two processes, we achieve a more homogeneous images which appear to have been taken by the same camera and which has been optimized to improve fish segmentation. Then, estimating the lens dirtiness allows us to discard images that are so dirty that will not provide useful segments for our job. For the segment preprocessing, we use the width of the belt as calibrating method. Knowing its size in meters and pixels allows us to calculate the size of an individual. Due to the nature of the images, the fish may appear overlaid so not all of them are suitable for measurement. The parameters that we have used to consider an individual as valid are as follows. A minimum size of 20 cm and that the length of the fish must be at minimum 4 times its width. By doing so, we avoid a large number of segments that are not useful for this job. For the training workflow, we have two main steps, image annotation and the training of the models. Image annotation can be done in two ways, manually or automatically. To do it manually, we have used an annotation software called CBAT, in which expert observers can delimit the fishes and assign a category to it. The labels that we have used are Big Eye, Skipjack and Yellowfin for each of the target species. Fish for those where the observer was able to delimit the fish but not to classify precisely. To do it automatically, first we must train the segmentation model with the manual annotations. Once the model is training, we segment monospecific sets, so we can safely say that all the fishes that our model is capable of segmenting belong to the same species. For the training of the models, we have to differentiate what we have used in each one. The segmentation model uses the complete images with their annotations, while the classification model uses already cropped segments of individual fishes. Both have been implemented in TensorFlow, using pre-training models for each work. Retraining all models has allowed us not to need as much data as we would have needed if we had to train them from the beginning. In this workflow, we focus on obtaining the prediction of the models and seeing how they fit our data. First, we try to evaluate the two models separately, but while for the classification it is easy to have a precise estimation of the accuracy, for the segmentation it is not that easy. For the classification model, we have constructed a confusion matrix in which the vertical axis represents the actual class of an individual and the horizontal axis the class predicted by our model. The confusion matrix of a model that classifies everything perfectly would be a matrix whose main diagonal has the values of 1 and the rest is filed with zeros. In our case, we can observe how our model correctly classifies approximately 3 out of 4 individuals. For segmentation, however, it's not that easy. How do we define the shape of a fish? One way to solve this and validate both models at the same time is adding new classes to our dataset. These new classes are head for only head segments, fin for only fin segments, and art for other type of segments, as the ones malformed. This makes our confusion matrix bigger, but the error remains the same. We must classify seg fish segments as fish, green square, and non fish segments as non fish, red square. This allows us to get rid of those bad predictions. It is preferable to lose some real fishes as artifacts, top right corner, than to add artifacts to what we are considering valid individuals, bottom left corner. This is due to the fact that we can extract many fishes from a set, so losing a few is not a problem. Once we have the results of our models, it's important to contrast them with official data, so this is what we do in our last workflow. For the comparisons with official data, we have four samples. 
The first two are more specific yellowfin sets, which were fished to free schooling, and the other two are mixed sets fished to floating objects. The free schooling ones have been very useful to increase the training set easily. However, we can see that their distribution is farther away than those of the floating object. This happens because the yellowfin tuna, instead of completely overlapping, they overlap only with their fins, making the segmentation model count one individual as two different fishes. This problem has been identified and we are working on solving it. At first, the floating object seems to be more complicated, since the species are mixed, but from what we can see, the distributions are estimated very well. The data we have just seen is the result of good quality images. But the moment the image capture system is neglected, the model is not able to work properly. In these other four samples, the camera was very dirty, so it was impossible to make an estimation. Thank you for listening to me. If you have any question, please don't hesitate to ask me. Thank you very much, Xavier. Well, there's a lot to unpack there in five or six minutes, but let's try and let's try and get to some of the questions. Uh, you, spoke, you spoke to how AI enhances the visual recognition of marine species in electronic monitoring systems. And your presentation is one of the first to really show fish, you know, on top of each other, underneath each other, and trying to partition them out and do species recognition at the same time. So it's fascinating how you're, you're slowly refining those models to help you. Um, what are the main hurdles that you foresee to have this taken up across fish value chains. What are the, you've spoken about the hurdles um, within your presentation, but what other, what other types of areas do you think there's opportunities to overcome, to improve? So thank you for your question. Uh, the main problem that we have encountered uh, working on this was uh, main the maintenance of the, of the overall electronic monitoring system because it's not uh, thought to use in order to make a, an automatic uh, work with these images. So the, the images were very, very, a lot of them were not very useful. So we have to uh, work a lot in this pre-segmentation uh, pre and pre-processing of, of them. So. That's and, and this was due to the quality of the images that were taken, the speed the fish were moving and how they were packed or due to other issues? Yes, it's, mo it's mostly because uh, they are very aggregated. So in a lot of the images, the cameras have a lot of blood, uh, blood and water splashes. So it's impossible to, to take anything from the images. Right, right. So it was a practical solution problem that we're also seeing on trying to monitor catches on boats. In that yes. they're, they're difficult places to work. Thank you very much. Max, can I hand over the question to you? And um, yeah, what's the um, what's the plan with with the, the work that you're doing? Is it uh, in a specific domain or, or will it be uh, do you plan on releasing it out widely? Because I think uh, it's a really important piece of work that relates to real world uh, scenarios that you, you've done and could be valuable for other people to use. I don't know if that's something that um, you're doing or or it's very much uh, in one specific domain. No, uh, no, this first uh, assessment was uh, mostly to, to assess the utility of the currently uh, images. So uh, because we were working with, with historical images, but the idea is to implement uh, implement uh, in more and more uh, fish, fishing vessels in order to do it uh, to make a better estimations for for uh, for environmental sustainability and and so this. Thanks very much, Xavier. It was a great presentation. Thank you. Anton, do you have any question? I think we're missing Anton. If, oh, no, okay. even if I'm unmuted, uh, no, not a specific one. But it's very interesting to see how you work to to get the information also to more um, official authorities that have to validate probably the output of your uh, of your approach. And do you have an, an idea how long it will take before 
um, electronic systems like this will be accepted by authorities for monitoring of catch or even by vessel captains? Well, we don't have an, a date or a, a precise timeline because now, as you can see, we have very as a small data to work on to compare with official data. So we are now working on making and assuring a good data pipeline to have more data to work and and but no we, we don't have a precise timeline to implement it these are these are these are the kinds of questions which we'll be reaching at the end and the opportunities for um groups and administrations such as fao who work closely with our fmos to try and bring the signal backwards and forwards amongst developers and fishers and and even valued people in the value chain trying to team together so that we can overcome these problems but also so we can get feedback across different groups about what's working and what isn't working so thank you very very much uh, xavier we're going to